Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power come on out the podcast where we talk facts over feelings. Let's just jump right in on this topic, but thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Uh, we greatly appreciate y'all. Keep in mind, we have a second channel that's growing as well. Please be sure to go over there and subscribe also right here at Rudy's Rant on YouTube. Go check it out. We'll be putting content on there. We're trying to build up the following before we start dropping a whole bunch of content on there because we want you to actually see it. <clears throat> so jump on in over there and subscribe as well. And don't forget to like, like this video, share it, and subscribe to Come On Now, the podcast. Again, greatly appreciate you. Let's just jump right on in. Colorado drops a heartbreaker last night to Kansas State, 31-28. Down 10 going into the fourth quarter. They make a comeback. They, they take the lead 28-24 with about four minutes or so, three, about three and a half minutes to go in that game. And um, then they pretty much immediately blow it. I mean, that's the best way to say it. They gave it away as quickly as they got it. They gave it right back as Kansas State goes right back down after falling behind 28-24. And they go three plays, 84 yards, make it 31-28 on a touchdown pass, 50-yarder from Avery Johnson to J.C. Brown or Jace Brown. Um, he got interfered with, still caught the ball, still went for, went to distance. And this was two plays after he dropped one that probably would have been a could have been a touchdown as well. But this game showed so many different things, and from the Colorado perspective, they lose Travis Hunter. And this is something that I've been talking about for quite some time. Travis Hunter was going to get hurt at some point this season. It was just a matter of when. And while you don't wish any type of injury on somebody, actually, I like Travis Hunter a whole lot. I hate how they use him. <clears throat> I hate how they overuse him. <clears throat> if you have – what do you, what is his better side? Because what, receiving – yeah, he's a good receiver in college because he's faster than everybody else. Um, and look, the Big 12 isn't that good. I, we have to understand that the Big 12 is a conference is, is mediocre. Uh, you lose Texas, you lose Oklahoma. It, it's just not a very good conference. All that said, Colorado has a miracle win over Baylor. Colorado has a win over North Dakota State that they were five seconds from losing potentially. So you have a couple of games in which they escaped. They escaped. Now, they did get that win over UCF, which was an impressive performance. But I think we found out what UCF is since that game. Keep in mind, <clears throat> UCF was 3-0 coming in. And UCF is now 3-3. Three and -three. Followed up the loss to Colorado with a loss at Florida. And then they lost at home this past week to Cincinnati. So realistically, UCF stinks. So that, that win, while it was a good win for Colorado, it, it, UCF wasn't that good to begin with. So we're looking at a situation now where this was the first opportunity for them to really get a sh showcase victory over a Kansas State team that was ranked 18th, 4-1 coming in, and coming off of a dominating win over Oklahoma State last week. End of the day, Kansas State dominated most of this game. They're up 24-14, probably should have been up more. Um, Giddens, their running back, DJ Giddens, who's an absolute beast. He has a chance for a, for a wheel route that he drops that would probably would have been for, gone for a potential would have gone for a touchdown. Definitely would have gotten him a first down. So instead of going up 28 14, they go up 24 14 when they kick the field goal. However, the way that Kansas State operated defensively, you're just sitting here like you're scratching your head, you're watching, like, what are you doing? They had pressure on Shador Sanders all night. And I got to give credit to where it's due. Shador Sanders played a really good game. Now, he continues to do that thing where he tries to drag, drag, uh, drift and drift and drag plays out, but he doesn't get rid of the ball. And, and he takes sacks because of it. He ran into some sacks last night. While he was under pressure all game, he runs into sacks. And it's because he holds the ball too damn long. <clears throat> I watched his dropbacks. They're bad. They're not dropbacks. It's almost like he's backpedaling, right? Uh, a a dropback isn't a backpedal. And technically, and you know, with technique, his technique is not good. 
and, and you watch it on every single play. I really was watching his dropbacks yesterday, and you see how it's just like a – it's a backpedal. Um, and if you go check it out, you can see it. All that said, they're down 24-14. They get an interception of Shador at the goal line, at the goal line, return to the 25. And this is like, I think it was 13, 11, 12 minutes to go in the game at that point. And you're sitting here saying, okay, run the ball as you've done the entire game. So there was 13, 19 left. Run the ball as you've done the entire game. Hand the ball to Giddens. You get a few first downs. You pretty much run this clock down. Colorado couldn't stop Kansas State running the ball. The only time Kansas State really got stopped was when Kansas State decided to throw it. Because running the ball-wise, Kansas State ran the ball down their throats. Giddens had over 100 yards at halftime. So, I mean, they had four possessions. The four possessions in the first half, they had two touchdowns, two punts. But even, on the again, <coughs> when you look at their first, the one possession in the first half, Giddens goes for 26, then they throw, then he goes for 13, then they then they give the, then they put in Edwards. Now Dylan Edwards is the transfer from Colorado who went over to Kansas State. Dylan Edwards is not the same type of back as Giddens. Giddens is a truck. Giddens is a is a guy who has great uh, you know agility and he reads holes very very well. Whereas Dylan Edwards is more of a scat back. He's small. You don't give the ball between the tackles to a small running back. You change it up. This is a situation where Edwards should be hitting on the edges, but they're just, they're handing the ball in between the tackles, and he can't get he can't break those tackles. Whereas Giddens runs through tackles. I mean, he had a he, he ran he made Shiloh Sanders look like the overrated bum that he is. Yes, Shiloh Sanders is an overrated player. He's 24 years old. He can't make tackles. He's always looking to headhunt. He'll he'll risk a penalty, risk missing a tackle to headhunt somebody. In fact, he had a headhunting tackle in the first half where he clocked. Giddens across the back of the head when Giddens was already down and they didn't even look at it for a potential review of a targeting penalty. It was a dirty play because he was down. The ball was, he was down and the thing was dead and he went straight for his head. And that's how Shiloh Sanders plays. And it's real, and it's real, and it's one of those things where I thought their defense was better when he wasn't out there. Because if you look at their last few games and see he hasn't been playing, their defense played better. He comes back and their defense looks like trash again. I thought their defense was terrible yesterday. <clears throat> um, but even if you look at it, first and 10, Edwards runs the ball for two yards. Then they pass, pass, and they punt. Every time they decided to become a passing team, they did not succeed. There were issues. Now, sprinkling the pass is one thing. Making the pass your focal thing is not what works for Kansas State. Even in their first drive of the second half, 16 plays, 81 yards, touch, then go 21-7. And then immediately thereafter, they let Colorado go right down the field. And, and when I say let them, I say from a perspective of you just got the lead. You've eaten, you have the big, you have a 14 point lead. You've eaten up eight minutes. Well, one thing you cannot do is let Colorado go right back down with a quick drive. Not to mention, Travis Hunter and Jimmy Horn Jr. are not playing. So there's no reason on earth that these guys should be completing passes like this. And that's a testament to Shador and his ability to find guys, but also a, an indictment on what they're doing defensively because these other receivers should not be wi running wide open like they are. They're not good enough. They're not good enough. <coughs> Sorry. But they look good. But they look – They looked. I mean, Shador did a great job. He, he, he found guys. But it's like Will Shepard, 25 yards. Will Shepard, 15 yards. Amari Miller, 13 yards. You, you have 15 yards. It's Everything is – it's one of those things where you sit here and you're watching and like, wow, they just on that one possession, six of seven for 75 yards. Now, Shador, numbers wise, incredible. At one point, he was 33 of 37. He finished 34 of 40 for 388, three touchdowns and a pick. But man, oh man, oh man, when you look at from this the the, the situation at 21 14, now K State goes back down the field, right? They have the ball, um, run the ball, 15 yards, run three. Now we go to pass the ball, second and seven. He's sacked. Third and 14, J Johnson, Avery Johnson completes a pass to Jaden Jackson for a first down. You're going to complete passes. But every time they went to pass, in early situations, it seemed like for the most part, until the end, they had problems. They just had problems. Giddens for one, Giddens for one. And then 
this is where he had Giddens wide open and Giddens just dropped the ball. So that's not so much the fault on this one for 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 throwing the ball because the guy just because Giddens just dropped the ball. They hit they kick the field goal. They go up 24-14. Again, Colorado's moving down the field again because Kansas State. I, Kansas State's putting pressure, 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 but then yet giving up these. <clears throat> it's like if you don't get to Shador, if you don't get to Shador Sanders, he's going to complete a pass because these guys are going to be playing park ball. Someone's going to run open, and next thing you know, it's a completed pass because Colorado did not run the ball at all yesterday. Not at all. At 10 carries the entire game. 10. 10 carries for 21 yards. They did not even try to establish the run. They're down 21-7, and they're playing, they're playing no huddle offense. Down 21-7 on their home field with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. They were playing the game like they were down 35. Now that might work for them, but I don't think it works for the longevity and the health of your quarterback. Or the receivers for that matter, because you know how Travis Hunter got hurt offensively. He got hurt taking a hit, a perfectly clean hit. He got hit right under the shoulder pad, coming across on a crossing route. After he caught the ball, he goes in, he gets hit. I think it was, uh, I think it was the left, I think it was his left shoulder. Um, he gets hit, and apparently whatever hit he got, I don't know what happened specifically, because I saw the play, but they never really told us that he separate his shoulder, dislocate his shoulder. I think maybe he suffered a shoulder strain or, or, or sprain and he couldn't. If he can't lift his arm up, then he can't play. Like that's a problem. You're a wide receiver and a cornerback. He can't even play on on, def on defense if he can't lift his arm up. And when I saw him go out, I'm like, oh, he's done. You could tell he was done because he, he, he's a dog. He, he doesn't. He's not going to quit. But if you can't lift your arm up, you're not going to be effective. So they get the ball down again to the KSU 21, and this is another example. You have a third and 13. This is what happens in this game. You have third and 13 from the Colorado 22, and what does Kansas State give up? A 24-yard pass to a Marion Miller. What is going on? That's not supposed to be so – and it wasn't and it was even hard. And that's what makes it so silly when you watch it. It wasn't even hard. It, it's like they were able – you don't have 25-yard plays in your playbook unless they're called bombs. But at the same time, you're what when a guy's running wide open on a basic route, this wasn't a bomb of 24. I, it just Kansas State defensively, schematically, was just very, very interesting in this because they were getting to Shador the whole game. But when they didn't get to him, he crushed them. Now, Shador commits an intentional grounding. So now you have a second and 28 from the Colorado 28. And what happens? A 51 yard completion to Omarion Miller. Down the right sideline. Where is the safety help? How does this man get beat deep? Like, this is insanity. But this is also how Colorado plays. So you have one of, you have typically, there's three potential options with Colorado. And at this point, you knew they're not running the football. They're not going to run the football. So why, I, I don't know why you can consider playing the run. But at the same time, you have to have over-the-top coverage. You need to have help, you know, from the safety. You have to have it because they're either going to run a short, but they ran pretty much all day yesterday, these short little screens, the slants occasionally, but it's either a short screen or the deep ball. And in that situation, you can pretty much best bet that they're going to throw a deep ball. And the fact that you're not prepared for that or ready for that is crazy. So they hit that play for 51. And on the next play, they get to his feet again. He, he airmails it over his receiver, who was covered, no less. It's intercepted. Taken back to the 25, you're sitting here saying, this game could be over now if Kansas State just does what it's been doing because Colorado hasn't slowed them down. And now you take out Giddings. And I'm sitting here like, is there some like backroom deal where the coach is saying, I got to find a way to blow this game on purpose? I, I'm joking, but I'm sitting here saying, what you're doing is working. They cannot stop DJ Giddens. Why the hell in the world would you even take him out of the game? He needs to get the ball. Was he hurting? I don't know. Was he tired? I don't know. He ran for over 180 yards. But immediately, 
Dylan Edwards inside the tackles. Dylan Edwards inside the tackles. One yard, one yard. And then they put Giddens back in the game, and he completed a pass for four yards, and they got a punt. That three and out was massive because if they get two, three first downs and then punt, game is probably over. You're talking about instead of the ball 11 27, you're talking 40 seconds, 40 seconds, 40 seconds. If you get two first downs, if you just got one more, that if you just got a first down there, you're looking at eight and a half minutes left. If you got two, you're looking at six and a half minutes left. Because King State did a really good job bleeding clock on every play. They didn't snap the ball with 20 seconds to go on the play clock. They were snapping it with five. <clears throat> so Colorado gets the ball back, and boom, 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 boom. They're down the field again. They're down the field again. 14 yards. You have a you had a where was it here? You had a third and seven at KSU's 42, and they get in and they get held, and then the DB commits a, a pass interference. So now you have offsetting penalties. Why he committed pass interference, I have no idea. That was just a bad play. And then of course, on the, they they get they get four yards on the next play, and then they get a, a 14 yard completion on fourth and three, where Lejante Webs Wester is wide open. Well, I mean, uncovered open. Like those types of breakdowns can't happen. That's why I say the Big 12 is just not very good because even the teams that are considered good are not very good. Uh, you look at the rest of it, 17 yards from Shador and incomplete. And then Shador uh, for, for a one-yard pass, and they run the ball in. They ran the ball. So it's 24-21 with 644 left. And then we get this stuff with uh, – this is another one that just was baffling. You have there was a 23 yard pass from Avery Johnson. So again, oh, here we go. Start over. Remember, they've been running the ball the whole game. Now all of a sudden, it's first down from the 25, and Avery Jan Johnson's throwing the football. DJ Giddens is sitting on the bench. Dylan Dylan Edwards is in the game. Why? Why? Are you trying to not win? But they complete a, a pass over the middle to Jace Brown for 23. Then getting, now Giddens is back in the game. He goes for five. It's second and five from the 47. Why are you going to start throwing the damn ball? I'm sorry. He completes the pass for 12 for a first down. And they're at the 35 of Colorado. Giddens goes for four. Okay, second and six. So then what do they do? Pass, pass, pass. You've run the ball down their throat. You sprinkle in pass. It, it just, it was a very odd game plan for a team that had done one thing pretty much the entire game. And then when the game was on the line, they just went completely out of character of what they were doing. It, it, it's like almost like a, it's a choke job. If Kansas State had lost this game, it would have been an epic choke job, similar to how Baylor lost. They would have, they choked. They choked. And I give Colorado credit. They never quit. And that's one thing I can respect about Colorado. I don't think that I think defensively they still stink. Um, people can lie to themselves and say their defense is better. Defense stinks. <clears throat> if you can run, if you can run the ball, you can run the ball up their ass. They can't stop the run. I mean, they cannot stop a nosebleed. And honestly, they can't stop the pass either. They they have holes everywhere. Cake State's not a passing team, but Cake State won the game passing the ball at the end. So Avery Johnson's throwing the ball. And instead of running the ball, like, I'm not understanding. Now it's fourth and six from the Colorado 31. And you're sitting here. There's a decision to make. There's 402 left. See, besides the fact that you decided to pass the ball, you're also stopping the clock because Colorado had one timeout left. So you're stopping the clock. So after this run for four yards, you burn 33 seconds and you throw the ball. So they burn six seconds over the next three plays. So what happens here? You have fourth and six from the 31, and you're and 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 instead of kicking the 49-yard field goal, I'm going up 27-21. Of course, I get the thought, the thought process. The thought process, in my opinion, from Kansas State was we, we kick a field goal, we make it, it's 27-21. A touchdown still beats us. That's the mentality. I understand it. And I guess watching how your defense was getting gashed at times for chunk plays, you have that concern as a coach. And I understand that. But you still have to play the smart, play the make the you have to trust your defense, in my opinion. So either you punt, which is probably a very unpopular decision if you're too afraid to have your field goal kicker kick, or you attempt a 49-yard field goal. 
If you miss, they get the ball right there. Okay. Good. They still need a they still need a touchdown to beat you. I'm sorry, they need a field goal to tie. Because it's 24 21. You need a field goal to tie. They need a touchdown to beat you. It may change how Colorado approaches it, which I think it would have. Because coaches just psychologically play for field goals in field goal game and field goal de- you know difference games. But what happens? Colorado blitzes everybody. Avery Johnson, who's an okay throwing quarterback, not a great throwing quarterback, an okay throwing quarterback, makes a terrible throw. It bounces off someone, gets intercepted by Colton Hood, and it's returned to the Kansas State 17. The only thing that stopped it from being a pick six was the guy just tripped over the grass. He didn't get tackled. He tripped over the grass. Now, luckily for him, Colorado punches it in the end zone two plays later, and they're up 28-24. So you have now seen the 24-14 league disappear because you went out of character. And I don't think Colorado's defense did anything special. I think Kansas State just stopped doing what they were doing. And you hear the the commentators saying, oh, well, they only run the ball for 11 yards in the fourth quarter. Yeah, because they haven't really tried to run the ball. My dog is barking. I apologize. You have to stay in the character of your team, whether it's in the fourth quarter, the third. You have to, you have to be who you are. And when you're up 24-14, and I think Dylan Edwards is a good running back, but you can't run the same place for Dylan Edwards that you run for DJ Giddens. If you've seen, I mean, DJ Giddens is a bad dude. He's a bad dude, powerful runner. So now you have the situation here where you have, they get the ball at the, their own 16. And the first pass was to J.C. Brown. He dropped it. I mean, that was a ball down the sideline that he dropped. Next play is a completion where Giddens runs wide open. So Giddens is on the in the game. He catches a swing pass. He's wide open. I don't know where Colorado's defense was, but Giddens goes for 34, gets to midfield. He was wide open. On the next play, Avery Johnson hits J.C. Brown on the left sideline. He gets interfered from behind, catches the ball. Guy misses the tackle. He runs in touchdown. They're up 31-28. And so they won the game throwing the ball, but they should never have been in that position because if they had continued to run the ball as they had, it's weird. You look at it, one, two, three. I'm going to count these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, 10. They threw the ball 10 times in the fourth quarter. Avery Johnson threw the ball 23 times the whole game. So 10 of his 23 passes were in the fourth quarter when they were winning by 10 points. That's leaving character. That's leaving your that's, – that's getting out of character. They ran the ball 40 times. 40. And when they ran the ball, let's let, – let's, Take it this way. They ran when they ran the ball, they were largely successful. They could not, DJ Giddens could not be stopped yesterday. It was it was impressive watching that kid. But then you get the ball now, and Colorado has the shot to, to win the game. And again, I give them a lot of credit. They fought, they battled, they 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 didn't give up. But this is where Shador Sanders becomes Shador Sanders. And Shador has to remember, and he fails to do it because this is it's like it's a story of him. <clears throat> he completes the pass for four, incomplete. Then they have a false start. Completes one for six. It's four and fourth and five. You need five yards. You need a field goal to tie the game. And this is where the problems exist, where you don't have. This is where Travis Hunter not being on the field truly makes a difference. And it's why I said that if Travis Hunter can't play, Colorado probably can't win. They probably can't win a game. Because now you can game plan for no Travis Hunter. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know when they play. Let me see. When do they play next? They play on Saturday. They have, a, they have an off week? No. They play on Saturday at Arizona. Arizona is 3-3. Three and three. They have lost two of the – they lost three or four. They lost to Kansas State 31-7 um, at Kansas State. They beat Utah, but then they lost to Texas Tech, who, I mean, it's crazy. And they got blown out by BYU this past weekend. Again, this is a team of similar teams, not 
great, not awful, but similarly matched teams. And you have an active athletic quarterback in Fafita with Arizona. But the question really comes down to this. And they and they can run the ball. I mean, their best running back is averaging, gosh, he's averaging almost five a carry. Shoot, probably about five a carry. Um, if Hunter can't play, you, it changes the offense. Because if Hunter's on the field in that final play where they decide, where, where Shador decides to go downfield for a bomb, needing five yards, you have that guy who would have been up the, I mean, to me, that's an easy play of Travis Hunter's out there because he's running a crossing route or a short, he's short, running a short route. The corners are petrified of him. They play 10 yards off of him and he smokes them. And he gets the first down more than likely. That's my opinion. But instead, Shador throws the ball downfield. They didn't have anyone running an intermediate route. And I saw some stuff where people were posting, well, he has this guy coming wide open across the middle. No, the guy was not wide open. Guy was not wide open. So stop that. There was no one wide open. In fact, Will Shepard was blanketed, and some people think it was pass interference. I think it's a bang-bang situation where the ball was thrown th two yards out of bounds, underthrown two yards, underthrown two yards out of bounds. The corner is looking. Just because Shepard's throwing his arms around him, saying, I can't get back to the ball, the corner's looking back for the ball. The corner wasn't tackling Shepard. The ball was badly, was grossly underthrown. And in a couple of games earlier this year, they got away with that and had PIs called because the defensive player was not looking back for the ball. He's looking over here and he runs right into the receiver. That's not what happened here. And you can call me, say whatever you want about me. It's not what happened. Compare that to the play against <clears throat> North Dakota State. Compare the play to um, oh, no, 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 no. what was the other game? Um, compare the play to uh, there was one versus uh, Central Florida. Oh, Baylor. There was one against Baylor. You compare those plays, it's different. It's a different situation. So, I mean, referee doesn't call it, but that's not the play you run. That's not the throw you make. You needed five. You needed a first down. It was a minute 20 to go. And this is where Colorado is. Now they're four and two. Um, I Like I said, I am impressed by their fight. I thought Shador played an otherwise really, really good game. But he has this tendency to drag these plays on and create – he creates sacks. He created a couple of uh, intentional grounding, or at least one intentional grounding. Probably could have been two. Hell, there should have been three, actually, I think. Um, but the drifting and not getting rid of the ball quickly enough, when you don't have anywhere to go, just get rid of the ball. And that's where it gets – you're wondering if you're like, are you, are you protecting numbers? So let me know your thoughts. If you watch this game, what do you think of it? Uh, I, I I still I stand by my thoughts on four and eight. I don't know that they're gonna win. I I don't know if if Travis Hunter cannot play, they might not win another game. And the schedule's favorable. It's not a great schedule, but they might not win another game. They play at Arizona, at Texas Tech, at Kansas. Texas Tech can score points. Now they can't defend anybody. They can score points. They play. They, they host Utah. Utah's not the same team that they they were early this year. They host Cincinnati, and they host Oklahoma State. <clears throat> we shall see. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I thought it was a very impressive comeback. I thought Kansas State allowed that comeback to happen by just leaving character. And uh, at the end of the day, CU had a chance to have a big win they could put on their resume. And they lost. So they are no different than they were before. We found out that UCF really stinks. We know that Baylor stinks. Baylor's 0-3 in conference, 2-4 and overall. We know that CSU stinks. The only good team that they've really played is Nebraska. And Nebraska is now 4 and is now, what's Nebraska? Nebraska's 5-1. and one. Their one loss was a, a loss to Illinois. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to pound that like button. Be sure to jump on over to Ruse Rant and subscribe over there. Facts over feelings, man. Come on now.